everybody. Uh, welcome back to 2019. 2019. <laughs> How did we get here? <laughs> it's hard to believe it. Really, this is this is the year I turned 50, bro. Ooh. <laughs> I used to think 50 was really old. I really did. And now I look at it and I'm like, I'm really not that far away. I'm 30, about to be 32 here pretty soon. So <laughs> you're it's just a quick, baby. You know? <laughs> you're closer to my kid's age than you are to mine. So that's hard, <laughs> hard to kind of wrap my mind around. Well, hey, listen. Uh, Today, we are starting a new series called Overcome, and we're glad that you're there yeah. um, at your group uh, to talk about this, to listen, uh, not only to the messages on Sunday, but to discuss it even further. And so we wanted to kind of just jump right in today. we got a lot of work to do uh, because the scripture speaks of sin and the talons that it gets right. in our lives. Right. Um, when it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily, easily entangles. I hate that yeah, word yeah. easily, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, I it's think, nature. It's it's what we lean into. It's the most natural thing for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and and that's part of what it is to be in the flesh. I mean, this yeah. body that we live in is, is broken, and for right. each person, it's a little in, it's a little unique. It's individual. Yeah. And and so sometimes I think we we fail to recognize uh, that that just because I struggle with something and someone else doesn't, or they struggle with something and I don't, doesn't mean that we're not both struggling right. with sin that so easily entangles because right. there's just part of our flesh that's ugly. Right. Yeah, this is the human condition, right? Everybody here is walking some kind of battle, dealing with some kind of difficulty. And it is easy sometimes to think, oh, it's just me. There's something right. wrong with me. But this is part of who we are. This is part of what we are supposed to be throwing off. This is the race we're running right now. So yeah, everybody's in this one right. together. Yeah. yeah. And so if, if you're at a home or in a group, uh, it might be worthwhile, especially if you're close and you've been together for a long time, uh, for you to discuss maybe some of these things that you find yourself entangled with, um, or maybe at some point in your life you were entangled with, you might even find that encouraging to other people in your group that are trying to overcome something in particular. And we have a God of deliverance. We're gonna right. talk, we talked a great deal about that Sunday. Uh, but let me, let me ask you this, Jeremy. One yeah. of the, we, we were talking a bit earlier um, that when I was a youth minister, and that was so long ago, I mean, you were about five uh, <laughs> when I was a youth pastor. Uh, but there were two things that you deal with now yeah. Two sins that easily entangle yeah. uh, that we never once really dealt with. And uh, those are vapes yeah. and nudes, right. which I'm not even sure all the adults know what both of those are. But yeah. talk about how quickly you see yeah. young people getting caught, particularly in those two things. Yeah, yeah. So just for the sake of clarity here, when we speak of vapes and nudes, we're talking about electronic cigarettes and we're talking about pornographic images that students or teenagers are sending back and forth to one another. Of themselves. Of themselves. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so... You know, this is something that, like David was saying, in history, we've never really dealt with. And it's really come to head at this time right now. And it's really because of the ease of yeah. access. This is like, especially when it comes to internet pornography, this is one of those yeah. deals right now where it is almost normalized in our culture, right? Um, almost a rite of passage for students or young men to get a hold of pornography at some point. Yeah. It's normalized in some ways. And so students find themselves, teenagers find themselves sending these things back and forth with no consequence. And they, th they feel they feel that. Right. They think right. none. It, it, it feels like there's no consequence. It's, it stays on your phone. Only one person has access to it. <laughs> yeah, right. That's right? how that goes. <laughs> right. And then shortly after you find out really quickly that, oh, no, this is a very public thing. You know, <laughs> what you put on the Internet stays right, yeah. forever. And, uh, you know, we know our bodies are the temples. Right. We yeah. know that the Holy Spirit resides in us. And so... Uh, with things like electronic cigarettes, things like vapes. These are things that we should be throwing off of ourselves. Right. Because, because they prevent us from running this race, they hinder us That's right. from accomplishing everything. And, and I, I was reading recently um, an article that said that, um, that giving up vapes is more difficult than giving up um, smokeless tobacco or smoking yeah. um, in large part because we don't, we, we, we've, we've tried to, what, what it's done in large part is minimize the consequences and the negatives That's right, um, yeah. of smoking or even smokeless yeah, tobacco. I absolutely believe that. And again, I don't mean to keep returning to this, but the way that we have normalized these kind of things, right. um, it just seems like there's no consequence to this sort of deal, but really it's hurting our health, yeah. it's hurting our relationships, this is deteriorating our, our moral lives. It's hurting us, you know, yeah. but it's a normal thing. And, and, but what's interesting is it says it so easily entangles, and so we're making it easier to get into it, yeah. and then we wreck it, but, but it's harder and harder to get out of it. Yeah. Maybe you know, that's, a, that's a principle yeah. maybe, right? I don't know. Once upon a time, right, if you wanted to gain access to something like 
pornography, right? right? You had to walk up to somebody, uh, a clerk at a counter, and have an awkward conversation, maybe run into somebody that you didn't want to see right. that's yes. from your church or, right, you know, somebody you work with. And, uh, and now this is something that's privately done. Right. It's so, so easily entangles. Right. And uh, again, back to that normalcy thing, it's something that you can keep within your lives and nobody yeah. have to know about. Yeah, and, and that would be, like I said, a, a great way for you to take some time in your group and to talk about some of the things that you've seen entangle others. Because it's easy to sit back and talk about the things that young people are dealing with. Uh, but in reality, we as adults are just better at hiding them. Right. Um, we're just smarter. Um, and so we've kind of figured out ways to, to get around it. Yeah. But the longer you walk in it, the deeper entrenched it is in your life. That's true. That pattern becomes more and more um, difficult for us to overcome. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, step one with, with this sort of thing, if I had to start anywhere with trying to uproot these sort of things from my yeah. life, I would start with honesty. Um, mm. The, the yeah. moment of, you know, not to secu secularize this too much, but, you know, you, you're sitting in an AA meeting or something and they say, you know, the first step to to defeating this problem here is identifying, identifying that there is yeah. a problem. And I, I think back to the garden, right? Yeah. Um, there's, there's Adam and Eve, they're covered up and the Lord has walked in <laughs> and he says, well, where are you all at? And they say, well, we're hiding because we were naked. And he says, well, who told you that? <laughs> And they're finally, for the first time, getting honest about this thing right. that they've been and, and hiding. He, right. right? And, and, he, and he says, she made me do it. Yeah, right, right. And, Just and, deflecting. And, right. And actually, you're the one who gave her to me right, anyway. Right, and she's right. like, well, the serpent made me do it. Right. And so right. We, kind of, we, kind of, we kind of, you know, make that up. And, and, and I see this all the time. I was, I was dealing just recently with someone who had a bad reputation in the community. And, and the person was blaming everybody else for their bad reputation. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and what was interesting is, is I was going, yeah, that's true. I understand that, that you may be, be treated unfairly by people in your community, but there's an awful lot of people that don't have right. that same thing. Why do you think you're, you're getting treated that way? And so I know that sometimes things, things happen, but generally speaking, this was because this person had given enough indication right. um, that, that, uh, that they could be negative. But it is spiritual, <clears throat> and we don't want to miss that, right. uh, because at the end of the day, um, what we're talking about is this passage of Scripture found in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Yeah. We want to make sure that we get there because we don't want to stay or we can talk about sin and how it entangled and all yeah. that all day long. Sure. Um, and of course it's unique for every person, but what we want to talk about is how do we overcome that? Yeah. Because we've got a God who wants to overcome. That's right. And, uh, and, and I'll let you share something personal in a moment if you want to, uh, and I will as well. But in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, 3 through 5, it says this, For though we walk in the flesh... In other words, because we live in this body, even though we are easily entangled with the things of the world, um, we don't wage war according to the flesh. Yeah. We don't fight the way that the world fights. Right. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. Have you ever seen that happen in, in your life or someone close to you uh, that was able to spiritually overcome something because of a stronghold? Yeah, absolutely. Stronghold. You know, I'll just personally speaking, for me, my from the year, I mean, I'd say from 15 years old to probably 22, I was addicted to pornography. Oh. Addicted. That's yeah. the word for it. And uh, for me... Gives you like a dopamine high. It, it really did, yeah. And it was one of those things that I would return to in moments of weakness, when I was feeling low about myself. Yeah. It was one of those things that it was one of those deals that it was like, it would build me up. It would give yeah. me that, that short-term high. And for me, the only way that I was able to cut this out of my life, uh, and for years I felt the itch, right? Yeah. Like a true addiction. Right. The only way that I was able to cut this out of my life was leaning into this spirituality, was leaning into my relationship with Jesus and experiencing community and just authentic uh, right. uh, love from other people, support from other people. Yeah. Um, and so it was, I would say, kind of a, a both and thing here where there was absolutely the spiritual component here the right. most important side of thing, I think, mm -hmm. I think, but also there was that, that sense of, I needed others yeah. to come alongside right. me and lift me up in the middle of being so addicted in this stronghold. Yeah. You know, I, I, I see this, this all the time. I know in my own life and, and, and on Sunday I talked a little bit about, you know, some of those sins that kind of easily, um, entangled, um, in, in my life. But, but what I recognize is the cure to it 
is spiritual. We've got to win in the spiritual. We've got to understand it's a spiritual battle. Yeah. And so what happens for a lot of people is we get to the first part of the year and we think that we just need more self-discipline. Yeah, sure, sure. And, and, and that's not wrong. Right. But it's not enough. Yeah, yeah. Because at the end of the day. It's not the thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah but at yeah, the end yeah. of the day, we, the Bible speaks of this battle between the spirit and the flesh. Mm -hmm. And they are opposed to one another. Right. And, 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 and the flesh wants to keep us from doing what the spirit wants us to do. Mm -hmm. And the spirit wants to keep us from what the flesh wants us to do. Right. And so there's this ongoing spiritual battle. And I know that, that this is so hard for us um, to find victory sometimes because we're just trying to white knuckle it and yeah. use self-discipline. Yeah, I, I think of, you know, I, I come from old school, Southern Baptist church background. And I think of that old hymn that just says, turn your eyes upon Jesus, yeah. look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Yeah. That it's not, you know, turn your eyes upon your self-discipline, your self-help, your 10-step program. It's turn good. your eyes upon good. Jesus, right? Yeah. And it's like the things that mattered so much previously just start to melt away a little yeah. bit. And I think that that um, is not just a trite little hymn, a, a great little rhyme, but I think that that really jives with Romans 12. Well, 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 um, and, well in, in, in this Hebrews 12, you can see it right here. Yeah. R right after it says, the sense that so easily entangles, let us run with perseverance to race Mac for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. Yes. The author and perfecter of our faith. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Uh, and, you know, because he's the one that he actually, and look what he endured. Yeah. I mean, he endured the cross, scorning at shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Yeah. And so whatever it is that you're enduring, whatever it is that you've gone through, um, is worth the spiritual battle yeah. uh, that you're going to have to engage in. Probably in 2019, there's going to be something that you're going to have to no engage in that battle. Yeah, I'm three days in, and I feel like I've already failed at my resolutions, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's exactly. We were just talking about this earlier, is that I, I set out, you know, the roadmap for how I wanted this year to go. Uh -huh. And already, I've seen resistance and battles along the way. You know, some I've won better than others, but... Yeah. It's just part of it. Yeah, yeah, that is true. Well, I would encourage you with your groups to take some time and to kind of think about, um, think about ways that spiritually you have been able to battle or people that you have seen that have battled spiritually and actually seen victory. And, uh, you know, of course, if this is like really near and dear to your heart uh, and you want to kind of walk through this, our journey groups are fantastic ways. Yeah. yeah, our journey groups, people are finding liberation um, continually. Those are on Tuesday nights uh, is the bigger version of it at Sunnyvale. Uh, we also have uh, marriage groups and, uh, and engagement groups, things like that. They'll be taking place um, both at Forney and Kaufman. But I'm telling you, it is a great opportunity for you to get together, to kind of be discipled through that. And so just wanted to kind of throw that out there as a plug as the year starts, um, that if you see something that's got its talents in you and yeah. you can't escape it, I'm telling you, as you said earlier, Jeremy, walking through it with other brothers and sisters yeah. who are learning the spiritual nature of it's important. Yeah. How, how many times have you tried to defeat something on your own? Yeah. How many times have you tried to conquer this one, be more disciplined, be more alert, be more you know, whatever, you name it? How many times? Um, for me, I know that in my own story that it, the, the true uh, victory came about when I invited other people in and I started to shine a light on what mm, my wow. struggles truly That's were. That's really good. Yeah. So, so listen, we don't always do this, um, but feel free to email either one of us. Yeah, absolutely. D. Griffin, yeah. with an I, Griffin, or J. J Fisher. Um, at clifec.com, yeah. C-L-I-F-E-C.com. Yeah, we'd love to hear from and, you guys. And we'd love to hear from you yeah. and then really try to help you find that path right. and we connect you with our journey groups or whatever it is that we need to do, maybe even a, a personal counselor. We'd love to do that because we know that this is the year that we want to get healthy. Yeah, part of our mission uh, literally is not just connecting people to God. Of course, we're a church, you know, that's, that's yeah. what we're all about. But connecting people with one another is... That's our MO. It's not just a nice little one-liner there, but that's what we're all about. And so we yeah. really believe in this, and we know that to experience true victory, it's going to come you know, not sitting in rows where you're looking at the stage and just kind of hearing things and thinking about how you'll apply it and fight the battle by yourself, but it's going to come when you start getting in circles yeah. and you start inviting other people in. Yeah, that's good. Well, we thank you so much for tuning in and being a part of this session. We're excited about these two weeks. And of course, coming just after that is going to be our new series called Love Song. And Love that's going to be Song. fantastic. Get it's ready. A dating <laughs> and marriage Woo! series. It's going to be great. Uh, thanks. And we'll see you next week.